If you're a new hand spinner, then the three most important things you can do to improve is practice, practice, practice. Now, I'm also a watercolour artist and one of the things I do to get better at watercolour and painting in general is I keep sketchbooks. So in this video, I'm just exploring what keeping a fibre sketchbook might look like for fibre artists. So come with me as I explore a technique that I've not done in a long time as part of my fibre arts creative practice. If you're new here, my name's Becca and I'm a hand spinner, knitter and watercolour artist and you're very welcome to my local woodland in West Wales. If you are an old friend, then welcome back. Now I'm going to carry on with my walk and when we get back to the house, I'm going to pull some things from the stash so I can do a little bit of practice. And my aim is to create a graduated yarn and I'm going to ply it with chain ply or Navajo ply. So see you in a moment. So these are the fibres that I've pulled from the stash and my idea is that I'm going to create a graduated purple yarn. So I'm going to combine purple and black, purple and grey, purple and white on the blending board to try and get a range of colours that means when I spin them in order it will in fact graduate from very dark to very light. I'm going to do this on my blending board. It would be much easier on a drum carder but I sold my drum carder a long time ago when I downsized and I don't think I really want to buy another one just for this type of process. I always prefer to use the blending board actually on my lap and I'm very lucky my blending board has a keel which makes it easy to kind of switch it from side to side. But I start off with just a very quick brief blend and then take it off and re-blend it so I'm sort of going through this process about three times and this is a bit like mixing paint so if we think about mixing paint when you are trying to create tones and shades you add darks and lights depending on what color that you want to end up with and that's what I'm doing here. So I've got my purple and I'm adding a little bit of grey and a little bit of black and so it goes on. So once I've got the first layers on, I'm going to take them off again and re-blend this. And I'm going to do it about three times. Again, much easier on a drum carder, but I mean doable on a blending board and actually also doable on a set of um, set of hand carders. Uh, quite a slow process, so I've speeded it up because I think you get the idea. It wasn't until I watched this footage back that I realised the picture that's above my head is at uh, a really wonky angle. So. Uh, that's really winding me up. I'm going to have to go and straighten that picture right now. So here are my different colours and I didn't actually blend the last one quite as much as maybe I should have done. So it'll be interesting to see when I spin this up how it how it actually looks but you can see I've got very dark and then they're gradually getting lighter and lighter as the process has gone on. Because of my little bobbins I'm gonna split each one of these in half and spin two bobbins the same. It's good to get in the habit of regularly oiling your wheel. I'm using sewing machine oil, which is a mineral oil. You can buy specialist spinning wheel oil and it's got a much smaller sort of nozzle and it has a tendency not to kind of drip quite as much as this one does. 
but anything that is a machine oil so um, gun oil will work um, anything like that and just about once a week give all the moving parts a little oil So spinning up, I'm doing a fairly fine yarn to start with because effectively it's going to be three ply because I'm going to do a chain ply. So I don't want a massively bulky yarn, I want something that's going to end up around about maybe double knit or Aran weight. So I'm on my smallest whirl and I've got the tension relatively high because it's a quite a fine yarn that I'm spinning just doing a plyback test so what I was keeping in mind was that I needed to have all my different colors separated so on to the chain plying and as I was doing this I really was thinking I don't think I've actually done this properly for about 10 years I've had a kind of little play but I really haven't done uh, a decent amount of spinning and then a decent amount of plying. So I was starting off quite slowly. The most difficult thing really is getting it started. So imagine you're making a crochet loop or crochet chain and I literally was just using my hand to turn the wheel to try and get the rhythm of the process. Well, I've just had to stop and come for a walk because <laughs> that kind of went a bit wrong. Uh, it's blown absolute healy, uh, but actually it's been really good to clear the cobwebs. I've got about six layers of clothing on. And, oh, wow, that was a fail. Mm. Uh, anyway, I, I'm just sort of thinking, what am I going to do? Because I want to be honest, I... I was going really well and I literally I turned the camera off and started to try and get into a rhythm of spinning and it all just went horribly wrong and I'll go back to the house and I'll show you I've, I've got the yarn on the noody noddy so I will show you the mistakes and then I actually think I'm going to spin the next um, skein I think I'm just gonna uh, do a two ply to see if I can actually achieve this graduated effect that I was going for. Ah well, I guess that is the point of your fibre sketchbook, isn't it? You just play around and see what happens. Ho oh, hum. <laughs> I knew there was a reason I didn't do chain plying very often. Oh well, we'll see. I'll try it again sometime. So back home and it's the next day and I don't feel much better about things really because I, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. There you go. So it was all going swimmingly and here it's beautifully chain plied but here not so much and I was going really well and then suddenly I just... I lost my rhythm and I ended up with these big sort of lumps 
and then it snapped and just did not work. Uh, so I've still got fibre left, as you can see. There you go. So I've still got that left, but I don't know. Not really, not really feeling the love for spinning at the moment. Going to go and do something else. So this is the something else I've been doing. There you go. Just a bit of sketchbook practice. Take my mind off my spinning fail. Ho hum. I guess I'm going to get back to it, but I'm not really, I'm not really feeling like doing three ply. I think I'm just going to do a two ply. I'll see you in a bit. See when, see how the spirit moves me. Well, I have taken my own advice and practiced some more. I think you can see the graduation works. On the second skein, it was much easier to do the ply. So yeah, practice, practice, practice. But I'm gonna knit one of those up and see what they look like. And I'll show you when I've done that. So I've knitted up a little sample and you can see the color change has worked fine. It's not the nicest of yarns. It's going in the ugly yarn pile, which will end up being part of a dog blanket. So when I want to cheer myself up, I get in the car and I go out and I go for a walk somewhere. So that's exactly what I'm about to do. And as I got in the car, I just quickly checked my emails and I have an email from my local library to say that the book I ordered has come into stock. So it is a knitting book and I think I know what I'm going to be talking about next week. Here's a hint. It's to do with stone circles and Jacobite rebellions. So until next time, happy creating. <laughs>